Okay, so I'm actually at the Fairford River today. You can see the dam in the background. And today's goal is to catch freshwater drum and do a catch, clean, and cook. I've never actually tried to eat them. Um, I've heard mixed reports on how they taste, but I, uh, I'm gonna hook up with my good buddy, Nate, and he is actually gonna show me how it's done. So let's get fishing. So that's just a white 3 8 ounce uh, Cabela's jig. This one did not break. We're gonna pair it with Nate's baits. Hot off the press. Thank you, Nathan. Would this be called a jig and a minnow then? A Is jig that, and a minnow. The, a typical, the old fashioned setup. I think I'm familiar with that presentation. So that's actually, that's a mullet minnow. Um, there we go. I, I did a com comparison video last year with these and uh, I'll admit I would fish the shiner two to one, surprisingly. Oop. Slippery little suckers. So, literally. If I can actually get this hook in there. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. Hooking it through the mouth, up through the back of the head like that. You guys can see that. The rod I'm using today is a Shimano Convergence six foot three medium extra fast action, and it's just with a Fluger reel, uh, Fluger Summit. Say that again. Oh, it's too late, I miss. <laughs> I shouldn't cut, I should just... Just keep rolling. Yeah. <laughs> no. You know what? That's an eater. Is it? Yeah. All right. Let's okay. do it. Poor little Look fish. Yeah. Check it out. Look at the colors on that fish. Unbelievable. Top five favorite fish for me to target Manitoba. 100%. We're going to go with another mullet minnow. Since that last one worked so well. Hook it down through the mouth. Up through back of the head. It stays in there good and solid that way. We'll toss it back out. I'll just show you guys my uh, jigging method. Not really a jigging method. Um, and also my apologies for the audio. It's really noisy here so we'll just have to bear with it. I really should start wearing a lavalier mic. So I cast it out there, let it drop down into that slack water, and I'm just going to tap it towards me, keep it off the bottom a little ways. There's a lot of snags in here. <laughs> the bite's on now. like that. What do you think on size? A little big, huh? 21? Up to you. Probably a little chunky. We keep the young tender ones instead. Yeah. So as you guys can see, this fish here, a little bit too big. Um, a lot of people shore fishing do not use a net. And uh, you take them onto the gravel here, they get the crap beat out of them. That's just not good. So carry a net if you're shore fishing, please. But then how do you get the fully gravel encrusted picture for like <laughs> I'm 
I may have sniped the car. <laughs> or a master angler drum. Where you're looking for either, not master angler. Yeah. That's called dinner plate. Yeah, size. 18 inches ish. Mm -hmm. That's what these pelicans have been eating on all day. I love these fish. I really do love them. Still don't beat a pike though. So I was down here today checking the bait fish trap, and Darren and I were talking about eating freshwater drum. A lot of people don't. I do. I think they're delicious, but you have to prepare them correctly. Um, the really, really oily fish, um, I like to take a lot of the fat off just because that's where the stronger fishy flavor is. If you like fish taste, oily, fishy taste, then don't follow my instructions. But if you like firm, white meat, almost like a chicken breast, try this. So first step is we bleed out the fish. Um, much, much cleaner to handle. And I find uh, some of the stronger taste is in the blood of the fish. So I always start out by bleeding them. Then I'm hoping that there's not too strong of a shadow here. But what I do is I go in the top of the back. Um, so I'm gonna punch in, get under the skin, big coarse scales on these fish, but under the skin, down the back, like so. Not on the most solid of surfaces here, or level of surfaces, but we'll make it work. So I'm taking it down the top of the back. Now at the front portion here, I'm just gonna cut in till I feel the lateral bones. There's the line of lateral bones, which are fairly short on a drum, but running out along that portion. I cut down till I hit them. Now I'm gonna cut along the front here. There we go, follow those bones up. You'll notice I'm not going down over the belly. On a drum, there's very, very little meat on that portion anyways. They have a large abdominal cavity or whatever you wanna call it. They got a big stomach. So we're taking it down. There we go. Now once I get to that point, work surface is a little less than ideal here, but. <laughs> Just a little. We're gonna cut up. Aiming just past the vent, cut up. Now we're gonna fillet it off like you would any other fish. Down to the tail portion. So, I'm gonna set this aside for right now. And this is the crucial part. The fat that's on this fish is just under the skin. It's in a white layer, so by cutting and letting my knife ride up, oh, say a quarter of an inch or so, I'm leaving all that white fat on the skin. There I dove a little deep, but now you're left with a firm white piece of meat on that chunk where I dove deep. If it's focused, you'll be able to see a white layer of fat. It's just incredibly fat and oily tissue right there. I like to take all of that off. I'll also sometimes trim this brown colored flesh out. Very simple to do though. Just a cut and a cut. And you don't have to remove all of that, but um, be a little stronger flavor in that darker colored flesh. There we go. Let's take that white fat tissue off. 
And that is what we're talking about right there. I trim this little bit of fat off the top. There we go. Beautiful. And that right there is ready for the grill. We'll just marinate it a little bit and away we go. I'm looking forward to trying that. We'll finish them off and we'll maybe try feeding the carcasses to the pelicans. You guys are dumb. It's in the foam. Sauce one way, the other one way out there. Yeah. Like okay. towards the bridge. Some of the dumbest pelicans I've ever seen. That's a free meal. But I guess we took all the meat off of it. <laughs> Let's go eat them. So we're going to thin this up a little bit. Just so that the marinade penetrates quicker. And they cook faster. I like it fairly well done on the grill. Um, so there we just split it like that. Thin it up a little. Put that in there. Not 100% necessary, but I do like it. Sliced thin. There we go. Look at that, beautiful. Freshwater drum sushi, anyone? There we go. Straight out of the river. Looks like you've done that a time or two. Like that, there. So I think we'll do a couple different, um, I'll do sometimes a lemon oregano, um, like kind of a Greek style, uh, do chili, a hot, uh, sweet chili sauce, uh, do barbecue. There, those are all good. So what we're going to do now is just add a dollop of the secret sauce to each one. Oh, here comes some sweet chili. Yep, looking good. Measured carefully. And then in the other one, we're going to do a bit of the barbecue. Woo, that came out quick. Um, mix that up. Let them sit for ah, 10 minutes or something. Really, it doesn't need to be long, but just let the flavors penetrate a wee bit. As deer meat for dinner would say, let it fall in love. There you go, the big mix. <laughs> Just like that. It's that easy. There we go. Let that sit for a few minutes and then onto the grill. Rolling. Our acoustics in here are he echo, 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 echo. Did you hear that? That's cool. All right, so we're on the grill. Ready to go. We've marinated our drum. This one is in a beautiful barbecue sauce. Ready? Oh, wait, almost forgot this step here. Don't do this at home, folks. You're supposed to put this on before you heat your grill. Because That's cooking oil, I'm guessing? This is, yeah, a good canola oil, organic canola oil cooking spray. Kirkland brand. Alrighty. Look at that. Beautiful. It's all about the sizzle, folks. 
If that one survives without dropping through the grate, I'll be amazed. Mm -hmm. Alright, and this, now we're talking sweet chili sauce. Sweet chili of mine right here. Love that flavor. Going on. Look at how beautiful white firm meat this stuff is almost like grilling a chicken breast. If you tried to do this with walleye, it would fall apart, just completely crumble on you. Drum is firm, flaky Ooh, whiteness. Just absolutely scrumptious. So we're gonna close the lid and give that about three minutes. Uh, 350 until it goes to 500. It's showing 350 because I had the lid open, but it's smoking hot. We're probably pushing 500 ish. Ooh, 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 look at that. Okay, here's our tender little morsel. I'm going to look after that right away because it's going to come off really quick. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. Look at that. Delicious. Gonna be so, so good. Look at that, folks. All right, now we'll finish it off. Give it another probably four minutes. I'm gonna turn the heat down at this point and just let it finish off. I like it fairly well done. Um, it's a nicer texture if you let it cook fairly well. Let it dry slightly. I almost forgot. Let's get this stuff off the grill. So we just finished it off for a few minutes at a little lower heat. Nice. Gave it probably another four minutes or something. And because it's thin, it cooks really pretty quick. Here's the sweet chili. Beautiful flaky whites. That smell is amazing. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm, good. Like that, folks. Straight out of the river onto our plate. So there we go. That's it. Look yeah. at that. All right. I'll just give you guys a quick look. That's what we're dealing with right there. I've never tried drum, so I'm looking forward to this. Give her a taste test. Bon appetit. Tastes like chicken. It actually kind of does. <laughs> it's the texture. It's not that far off like a barbecue chicken breast. Right, it's really firm. Flaky, white, firm, mild, very mild. So that first piece was the chili. Was sweet, chili. sweet chili. I like the chili better. Than the, than the barbecue? barbecue? Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, you can use any sauce. Uh, one of my favorites is um, just simple lemon juice and oregano. Awesome. Avoid anything that's oily. I, I don't use a vinaigrette or anything on it. Um, or a dressing. Say people say use Italian dressing. Well, that's a oil vinegar mix, and the oiliness uh, doesn't go well with this. It's a really quite a rich fish, quite a fatty fish. So 
stick with something that has a low fat content, but I mean, it's delicious. 10 out mm. of 10 would recommend. Yep. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Unbelievable. There you go, folks. More food for you to eat. Limit is 10. Just remember, don't keep anything over 24 inches. And you only want to eat the 17, 18, 19 inches anyways. Those are the best eating fish. Yep. Hmm. So good. Yeah. Hmm. I'm definitely doing that again. All right, well, thank you. Appreciate it. My my pleasure. That was fun. He actually offered to help hold the camera before, and that was that was perfect. I hate self-filming summer fishing videos. So. Anyways, that's all we got for now. More videos coming very soon. And don't forget, buy Nate Spades. It's good. Highly recommended. It. <laughs> It'll catch you some drum. <laughs>